Welcome to Mikun's Hardware. In this video I am going to test Intel Xeon E5 2678V3 with the DDR4 and DDR3 RAM. For the motherboard I am going to use Quanandri X99TF, which you can see here. This is a unique motherboard which supports both DDR3 and DDR4 RAM, and this is a unique processor which also supports DDR3 and DDR4 RAM. For the graphics card I'm going to use my EVGA GDX1080 and for the system drive Samsung 850 Pro 512GB. For this comparison I have got 4 different RAM modules. Starting with Micron DDR4 2400 ECC registered CL17 RAM, follows by G-Skill DDR4 3200 CL14 non-ECC non-registered basically usual desktop RAM, Crucial DDR3 1866 CL9 Desktop non-registered non-ECC RAM, Kingston DDR3 1333 ECC but not registered CL9. All of these modules are 8 GB each, but Kingston DDR3 1333 ECC, which is 4 GB per module. These modules are gonna be tested in the following configuration. Micron DDR4 2400 CL17 ECC registered, tested with 4 modules running at DDR4 2133, means 32GB of RAM in quad-channel configuration. Micron DDR4 2400 CL17 ECC registered RAM running with two modules 8GB each DDR4 2133 means 16GB in total in dual-channel configuration. G-Skill DDR4 3200 CL14 with four modules 8GB each DDR4 2133 means 32GB in total in quad-channel configuration. Crucial DDR3 1866 CL9, four modules 8GB each operating at DDR3 1866 for 32GB of RAM in quad-channel configuration. Kingston DDR3 1333 CL9 ECC, four modules 4GB each DDR3 1866 means 16GB in total in quad-channel configuration. Kingston DDR3 1333 CL9 ECC, 4 modules 4 GB each DDR3 2133, 16 GB in total in quad channel configuration. I have tightened the RAM timings as much as possible for every RAM configuration. On the screen you can see the detailed timing specification for each memory configuration. A few disappointments here is the crucial DDR3 1866 CL9 did not work with DDR3 2133. No matter what I do, how I do, it simply does not work. 1866 works, but I was not able to tighten the timings any more than the specified XMP profile. The RAM refused to work with the CL8, and trying to tighten the secondary timings also did not succeed. Quanandri X99TF has a little bit more secondary timings available for configuration, but testing this many RAM configurations already requires quite some time, that's why I was focusing on the main timings only. Before I go to the test results, let's take a look at the Huanandri X99TF problem when using DDR3 RAM. If you install DDR3 sticks and go to the BIOS, you will figure out that the memory frequency option has gone. Instead of the memory frequency option, you have DDR3 voltage level. Inside the option, you can select voltage for the DDR3 RAM. Auto 1.35 volts or 1.5 volts. The problem is that it's not possible to set desired RAM speed in this case. What you have to do is to go and restore the BIOS defaults. After that the BIOS restores itself to the normal state, and then DDR3 voltage level option is gone, memory frequency option is back. But this means it's not possible to select memory option and memory frequency at the same time. For example, if the motherboard for some reason decides to use 1.35 volts for your RAM, but you need 1.5 volts, and you also want to overclock your RAM, for example, to DR3 2133, that would not be possible. This is very annoying, but that's what you have, and that's what I had to deal with. This also means that if you want to adjust memory frequency with DDR3, you have to restore BIOS defaults every time you try to do the adjustment. The good thing is that memory frequency once set is preserved. Even if you reboot and go back to the BIOS, the option will be gone, DDR3 voltage level will be shown, but the desired memory frequency will be applied. Of course, if your system failed to boot with the desired frequency, you will not get to the BIOS. Now it's time to look at the test results. Let's start with ADA64 memory test. As expected, dual channel configuration is falling behind quad channel configuration roughly two times. What was not very expected is that DDR3-2133 is providing the best result here. 
66 gigabytes per second read, 48 gigabytes per second write, 61 gigabytes per second copy, and just 67 nanoseconds latency. Overall, the performance is almost identical across all the boards, but somehow the desktop RAM is providing worse results compared to the server RAM. For example, G-Skill DDR4-3200 memory which is designed to operate at high frequency when downgraded to DDR4-2133 is not able to tighten the timings as much as Micron DDR4-2400 ECC registered RAM. Nevertheless, this is just synthetic memory test performance Let's go to some real-world benchmarks. I have tested a bunch of different benchmarks such as CPUs out, Cinebench R15, Cinebench R20, Corona 1.3, Handbrake Video Encoding, Geekbench 5. Most of the results are almost identical. There are some minor differences, but these are so minimal that I count these results as identical. On the graph you see the results which have at least some kind of a meaningful difference. For example, in Geekbench 5 multi-score performance, the dual-channel configuration is scoring considerably lower than all the other configurations. With 8100 points, it's losing to 9400 points of the same RAM in quad-channel configuration. Yet again, DDR3-2133 with CL11 ECC RAM is scoring the best in all of the tests. Having 9500 Geekbench 5 multi-CPU score, V-Ray benchmark results are almost identical, but once again we see that registered ECC DDR4-2400 running at DDR4-2133 CL11 and ECC DDR3-2133 CL11 are scoring the best. The rest configurations are somewhere in between. The same applies to the dual channel configuration, which doesn't lose much. So, the synthetic results don't really see the difference between DDR4, DDR3, quad and dual channel configuration. How about games? I have tested all the games that I have hands on and Red Dead Redemption 2, Cossacks 3 and Astroneer did not see any difference between all of the RAM configurations. The results were almost identical with a margin of error. Battlefield 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and City of Skylines are three games which had some kind of a meaningful difference. Battlefield 5 average, mean and max values are almost identical between all the tested configurations, but 0.1% low results are a little bit interesting. For example, systems with just 16GB of RAM are having some sudden drops, sometimes FPS drops to 10, 13 or 20 FPS, which results in 72, 63 or 66 0.1% low FPS for dual channel configuration of DDR4, 2133 ECC registered CL11 RAM and for DDR3 in quad channel configuration with just 16 GB of RAM, 4x4 4 4 GB. DDR3 1866 and DDR3 2133 both had these sudden FPS drops. 32 GB systems with DDR4 2133, DDR3 1866 do not have these sudden drops. Initially, I thought that DDR3 is the cause of this problem, but after I have tested 32GB of DDR3 in form of crucial DDR3-1866 CL9, I did not get these FPS drops, I started to suspect that this is amount of RAM. Then I have tested 16GB of DDR4-2133 in dual channel configuration, and there were FPS drops. I have no idea why Battlefield 5 is behaving this way, the game does not use more than 10GB of RAM, Thus, it shall safely fit in 16GB limit, but somehow with just 16GB of system RAM, the game drops its FPS to very low level, like 13, 14, 15. This happens very seldom, but I have tested and retested, and it happens, even though very seldom. Another game which has seen some difference between the tested configurations is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. In this game, I am using the in-game benchmark and taking the average FPS by the end of the benchmark. Much to my surprise, 16GB of DDR3 in quad-channel configuration running at DDR3-2133 with the time in CL11 is providing the best result, having 127 frames per second in average. All the other configurations are providing basically identical result, having 123 FPS on average, with one outliner. This is dual-channel configuration, 16GB of DDR4-2133 ECC registered RAM CL11. Obviously, in this game, having quad-channel configuration is giving some benefit, 
but under realistic gaming conditions when your graphics card is gonna be the bottleneck, I really doubt that you will see any difference between quad channel and dual channel configuration. This if you plan to buy something like 100x99 8M, which has just two memory slots, I don't think it's a very big of a concern. City Skylines, averages, minimum and maximum FPS were almost identical between all of the tested configurations as well, 0% 1 low FPS results are almost identical, with one exception. 16GB in quad channel configuration DDR3 1866 running at CL10 is having the worst result, 11 frames per second, where the rest is having 15 frames per second. But I have performed my test three times and took the average for all of the configurations. Thus, the trend is here that having just 16 GB of RAM running at lower frequency is providing a bit worse results. All in all, I can conclude that if you are using Huan Andre X99TF and Xeon E5 2678V3 or any other Xeon which supports CDR3 RAM, you are free to pick DDR3 RAM. Do not buy expensive RAM which supports high frequency because this does not benefit this platform. These Xeons are very limited with RAM frequency and your best bet would be to tighten the memory timings. And the memory which is designed to work at high frequencies are usually not very well designed to work at low frequency and tight timings. In this particular case, base price for performance you will get from the 4 stakes of 4GB each DDR3 1333, which happily runs a DDR3 2133 with very tight timings CL11, 11, 11, 2620. DDR4 ECC registered RAM is also showing quite good results. If you plan to upgrade your computer in the near future, or maybe switch your motherboard and get something else, then I would go for the regular desktop DDR4 RAM. This RAM will be compatible with AM4 AMD Ryzen platform, it will also be compatible with most of the Intel LGA platforms, but it might be slightly more expensive. If you can find DDR4 registered ECC RAM for cheap, go for it. If you're trying to save every last penny in your system budget and trying to get the best gaming computer out of your budget, then in this particular case I would suggest you go with a registered ECC DDR3 RAM. As you can see from the test, it does not behave any worse than DDR4 RAM and might even behave better. But you need to understand that in the future, if you will try to upgrade your processor to something else which does not support DDR3, or if you would like to change entire platform, most likely you will not be able to reuse your memory modules and you would have to switch to DDR4, or maybe by that time it will be DDR5. And this is all I have for you for today. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye.